All right, so for those of you who are following along on my problem solving journey here, I just want to give you an update on the whole Seascape sort of troubleshooting thing. All right, so if you watch my video about solving problems, you know that I kind of isolated it down to composition and then handling the paint. But let's talk about how I handled the composition thing. All right, so I started thinking if I go out on location and I have a sort of compositional idea in mind and then I put whatever elements I see into that framework I'm much more likely to have a good composition so let me give you an example what I did was I videotaped a bunch of ocean scenes that I thought had potential okay and then put them on the computer went in slow-mo until I found a point at which the waves looked interesting then I screenshotted it brought it into photos and then I edited and cropped and what I started finding was that there were certain aspect ratios that worked better than others. For example, I've been painting on a four by five ratio, which would be a 16 by 20 or an eight by 10, whatever. It's a four by five ratio canvas, or in my case, a panel. So I've been using a lot of 16 by 20s, as you guys probably know. Well, when I tried to compose the seascapes using the four by five ratio, I just, it was really a struggle. So I ended up experimenting with different ratios and I came to find for me anyway, a two by three, you know, two high by three wide really worked. So in other words, like something that was a 24 by 36 or maybe a 16 by 24. So let's take one, for example, where I'm standing on the beach and I'm looking out at the ocean, okay? That's a view that I like where you've got a horizon, you've got maybe one or two waves and then you've got the sort of white water on the sand and the wet sand with reflections, that sort of thing. That's a theme that I like. So I think, all right, I need a, I need a framework or a blueprint. So what I noticed was I just went through and I, I cropped all these pictures instinctively without any sort of structure in mind, just pure instinct and in saying, okay, this looks good, this looks good. Then what I noticed was there were certain there are certain commonalities between them all. Like for example, I noticed that the horizon, I would always put it at about one quarter from the top. Like so one quarter down from the top. Then I noticed, okay, well I've put the wave at about the top of the wave, usually at about one third of the way down from the top. And then that wave would go down to the one half point in the canvas. And then the white water or the, the part where the water was reaching the sand at the bottom was somewhere in the one third range. Um, so, so I thought, okay, well I've got, there's, a, there's sort of a framework. So if I go out and I paint on location, I can use my, um, you know, my two by three canvas and uh, I can use that framework. And then all of the elements that I put in are dependent upon what the weather or what the light is like that day. All right, so that's how I, I'm attempting to solve the problem regarding composition. All right, so the next step is to how to tackle the brushwork. What I've decided to do is, is do some very careful, detailed, realistic paintings uh, where I take the paintings as far as I feel necessary uh, and with whatever brushes I feel necessary to accurately represent the, the, the wave. So in other words, taking it a lot further than I normally do but to really look at, study, and understand the anatomy of a wave so that I can properly deconstruct it in an abstracted and brushy way. You know, like I can't, uh, so that I can sort of dash them off uh, while I'm out there and have an idea of, in other words, I could see a wave do something for a second. And because I understand the anatomy of a wave, I will remember and I'll know how to reproduce that instead of trying to, you know, continue to wait till the wave gets to a certain point and think, oh yeah, okay, what's happening there? What's happening? Oh, there's a little dark line at the top of the break. Oh, there's, you know, whatever. So that's, so that's what I've been doing also. I'm really studying these waves by doing more detailed paintings of them and then figuring out how I can deconstruct them. The conclusion I'm coming to is I'm gonna have to be painting rather large on, on location because if you wanna have brushwork in there and yet capture all the detail that needs to be captured and yet have it done in a loose and kind of expressive way, painting's gotta be big. And uh, so uh, I'm thinking probably, I'm making some 16 by 24s. I don't think that's gonna be quite big enough. I think probably I'm gonna to go to 2436s on location. I think that's what I'm gonna to have to do. So 
that's the next step. So for that, I'm gonna have to order some, I wanted, and also too, painting on panels is difficult. I'm not sure I'm getting the effects I want there, so I'm thinking, okay, I may need to go to linen, expensive, but, um, you know, we'll see. I think that's what's gonna have to happen. I'm gonna have to get go to stretched uh, canvas for that, and I wanna use some good linen, so I'm gonna do that. So that's another thing I'm looking into. Anyway, I just wanna catch you guys up to speed on what I'm doing here. Again, it might, it's probably this is probably only interesting to a limited amount of people, but for those of you who are interested, just wanna share that. And if you have any sort of things you'd like me to talk about painting, uh, regarding painting, just put them in the comments below. So anyway, that's it for now. Um, thanks, guys. I will see you in the next video.